fun. Thank you. You know, a couple weeks ago, of course, the audience wouldn't know this, but uh, I had the opportunity of previewing Daryl Anka slash Bashar. And um, I think very briefly, before we actually get into what Bashar is all about, I was wondering if you might tell us just a little bit about <coughs> your background, because what people are about to see, this trans-channeling, for some, I think, will probably be a very shocking sort of thing. But I, I want people to know that you are an average, normal type of... I walk the streets just like everyone Right. Else. Um, well, basically, most of my life I've been uh, a designer, an illustrator. I've been drawing since I was two and got into the business relatively early. I've become involved in also the miniature end of uh, special effects for motion pictures within the last several years as well. That's basically what I have done for a living. So, I mean, you, you have cranked out graphic arts and yes. these miniatures and that's <clears throat> how you, you earn your keep. And then how did you shift into getting involved with all this extraterrestrial, other dimensional activity? Well, like a lot of people, I had been somewhat interested because that subject matter does run through our society. You hear about it. <clears throat> some people, you know, may choose to just discount it and some people are attracted to it. I just figured that I was hearing so much about it, there must be something to it, even though I knew there might be a lot of peripheral information that wasn't necessarily accurate. So I just decided to begin researching, reading books on it, just seeing if there were kernels of information that would piece together. And that's basically what started me off in that direction. And then at some point, uh, <clears throat> how many years ago was it, you actually had a sighting where you physically yes. saw a spacecraft yes, over Los Angeles? Yes, 13 years ago, um, two times in the same week. Uh, four friends with me the first time, two friends with me the second time, so I had witnesses, thank goodness. This was not a figment of your imagination. They all saw it, so if it was a figment, it was a mass figment. And it was very close, broad daylight, physical sightings. The first time, not more than about 150 feet away. Second time, not more than about 60 feet away. And um, good, long, solid sightings. And what I didn't understand then, and what I understand now, is that sighting was Bashar's way of sort of tapping my subconscious memory to get me to start accelerating the things I was learning to fulfill an agreement that I had made to do the channeling as I have now discovered. So really it was, it, if you will, it was a triggering a soul <coughs> memory. Yes. So that that image inside you would, would latch and say, <coughs> okay, this is something I want to pursue. Yeah. Even though you didn't necessarily know about the shark consciousness. No, most of, my, my understanding of most mediumships is that they are usually the product of an arrangement or an agreement that is made prior to the physical life. So you come into this life doing whatever you're doing, and that memory is, of the agreement is buried in there somewhere. So some event in the life will usually trigger that, and that was the one that triggered it for me. And then when did you finally actually start <coughs> practicing, if you will, trans mediumship or, or channeling? About four years ago now. I, in, in accelerating my research, ultimately I came across what mediumship was. I was eventually introduced to several practicing mediums at the time. And one of those mediums, one of the entities coming through one of those mediums, offered to teach mediumship for whoever was interested because there were several people that were. I took him up on it, not even then thinking this is something I'm going to do. I just wanted to learn more about it. I had read every book. You had no time. idea what was going to happen. No idea whatsoever. Um, and in the process of being tutored by that entity, when I was in a receptive state, is when Anima and Bashar, their people, made the mental connection with me. As soon as they did, the memory came back, who they were, who I was to them, what the ship sighting had been for, dream conversations I had had up to that point that I totally blocked, all came back in that one memory. And along with it came the message, okay, now is the time for you to start doing this if you still want to. So obviously I said yes, and that was about four years ago. You had the chance. And at what point, I mean, did it start out in a little way, and then you, all of a sudden there's been more channels oh, yeah. I mean, going it, on? Or? You know, it, it took a while to get used to. I mean, I'm, you know, it's not something that I automatically acclimated to. It, it was difficult at first. The energy was very different. There were physical changes, emotional changes. I went through a lot of the same skepticism that a lot of people go through, like, is this really happening to me? Am I making this all up? Am I going nuts? But I had a lot of validation from a lot of unsought sources that kept pointing in directions, and I just got to a point where if I was going to do it, I had to start going with it because if I was going to continue to fight the idea then it would really start driving me mm -hmm. crazy so I figured if I'm going to do it I might as well trust it as soon as I began to really trust it it became clearer what was happening pieces began to fall into a pattern and it became obvious that there was a particular direction to it now these spacecraft are still mm -hmm. circling our earth I mean as there's, far as and there's I several know, different types some are several different civilizations as far as I know um, the one that appeared to us, as far as I understand now, was Bashar's scout craft, which was triangular in shape, an equilateral triangle about 40 feet on a side, and um, was dark, dark gray in color. 
And were that there any lights flashing there on were, it? There was one light on each point, so a total of three lights. No flashing, just solidly on. And uh, they have many different styles of craft, but that is the one that I've seen. And several people have seen it since and reported it separately. So yeah. this craft leaves the mothership, if you will, and yes. can get closer yes. to Earth and, and doesn't have as many gravitational problems to deal uh, with. It is the mothership, I understand, that, that sort of stay a distance and then let the small crafts come and go, much you know, like a scout. Okay, and then in, in the course of your working with Bashar, and I understand what his, is, is it his lady friend or his consort is, Anima? He calls her his counterpart. I assume they're just basically associates. <laughs> I, Who knows, right? What goes on at that point? Uh, maybe you can ask. <laughs> um, but they, re they are representatives from their civilization. They have chosen to do this kind of work, as many members in their civilization have. And they do function through many individuals on this planet and other planets, helping them elevate themselves through whatever transformational processes they happen to be going through. And we know what they look like. I think you brought a sketch. And yes, they have described themselves. I've seen them in the trance state and in dream communications, and they are roughly five feet tall on the average. They have a very white, whitish gray skin coloration. Their eyes are very large and upturned. Uh, they have said that if we're going to make any kind of a comparison to something we're familiar with at all, it would be maybe Mongolian, Eurasian. Not quite. They're much more slender. The females seem to have hair. The males don't. And Show us. The, the hair usually tends to white even when it exists. So they're, they're pretty monotone in that sense. But their eyes stand out as the largest feature. And then what about the actual process of the channeling? Very briefly, what is, what is the, the telepathic communication mode <clears throat> that takes place between you and, and Bashar? What I've, what I've learned from Bashar and what I've learned now to do is to relax what typically passes for my focused consciousness and let it become more diffused or plastic, if you will, so that his consciousness can sort of impress itself upon mine so that mine can start picking up the pattern of his vibration. That interlinking allows my consciousness, my energy, to become a, a model of his thought patterns so you get a translation through my body. And he's not actually speaking English. It just pops out of my subconscious whatever words in our language need to... The concepts that are coming from. Right. So it's almost like tuning forks getting in resonance Very with much other. so. He says everything is the product of different frequencies of vibrations in the universe, so it's a matter of matching vibrational patterns to allow an identification to take place so that I can function like a translation device, for okay. lack of a better term. Well, is there anything we should know about what you're about to do just before you go in? Uh... Um, <clears throat> just that uh, when he makes the link, it'll be relatively conversational. It's, it's a very ordinary thing in, in that sense. It, it's very easy to communicate with him. He's very out front. He's not shy at all. So just a, an open, friendly discussion, anything anyone wants to really ask or say, doesn't have to be a question, is really the mode of operation Super. for it. Let's meet Bashar. All right. Thank, thank you, Daryl. Just take me a second. Sure. I think we have an extra cushion there. For okay. Me. Thank you. So. <coughs> this is just more the... <coughs> help me put my body in the position that I'm used to for the channeling. this day of your time as you create time to exist. Welcome, sir. And to you we extend our deepest appreciation. 
for your willingness to co-create as individuals and a collectivity of consciousness this interaction this day of your time to facilitate the merger and the blending not only of all the members of your society but of your society with other societies at this time in your transformational age. You may simply proceed in whatever manner you have co-created this interaction to take place. Thank you very much, Bashar, and welcome to Inward Bound, and welcome to TV, although I'm sure you have probably much more advanced methods of communication, but this is the best thing we've got right now here on uh, planet Earth. I was wondering if you might elaborate a little bit on the idea that you had in mind when we picked the title two weeks ago for the theme of the show, Live Your Dreams. I, I, have, some, I have some questions in mind, but I thought you might like to um, have something to say first. Thank you. The idea is simply to lay down a foundation and a format, as you call it, to let you know that what you typically refer to as physical reality is, in a very real and literal way, simply a projection, a dream. Now, when we say an illusion, as many of you have already recognized that physical reality is an illusion, we do not use that term to discount reality. But simply all we are saying is that your perceptions in and of themselves are what create the reality you experience. That you are manifestations, you are expressions, you, each and every one of you, are facets of the multidimensional crystal of infinite creation. You are all the thoughts of the infinite creator, all the different ways that the infinite creation has of thinking itself into beingness, thinking itself into creation. And so physical reality is but the dream of the infinite creator and each and every being within creation are the active co-dreamers, co-creators. So as you dream, as you believe, as you perceive, as you think, so you experience. So when you learn that your physical reality is simply the product of what you dream it, what you imagine it, what you believe most strongly your reality to be, then you will recognize that you are in control of the ebb and the flow of that experience of energy in your life, and you can create it to be whatever you desire, whatever you prefer it to be, if it is not so at this time. When we, when we look at our lives, I'm now speaking obviously for myself and I think for some people in the audience, for many of us there seems to be a discrepancy between the dreams that we hold, the visions that we hold for ourselves of what we would really like to accomplish hey. and, and what we see happening around us. Hey. But this is primarily because of the habitual ritual that your society has created of not believing that your imagination, that your thoughts and that your desires do in fact have an effect upon your physical reality. Not only an effect, but they are responsible for creating it to begin with. When your society continues to believe that physical reality happens outside of you and that you really have absolutely no power over what is going on, that you are simply a random cog, as you say, in a large machine that operates without you or with you, then you do not know that you are in touch with that creative ability. You do not know that the reality that you see around you will also be the product of your unconscious and subconscious fears and belief systems. The idea is to bring this awareness to conscious level so that you can know that what you see around you may be the product of what you have been taught to fear might be true, what you have been taught to believe might be true against your desires, against your preferences, and to be in control of knowing that once you acknowledge that you are creating what is around you anyway, you know you are in control of it and you can change in the directions you prefer to. We talk about belief, emotion, thought. Hey. These being, I believe as you put it, the keystones or the cornerstones of the prism. We are a crystalline structure. Our body has obviously an energy field. And those three things, belief, emotion, and thought, is what creates the reflection? Is what creates what you call your persona, your personality. You see, your persona, your personality, the person that you believe yourself to be, you consider yourself to be in this life, in this focus, is not exactly the totality of who and what each and every one of you is. It is an artificial construct. It is one of your many faces. As a total being, a total energy being, you span all time, all space, and you project many aspects, if you will, of yourself into many different dimensions of reality and experience and expression. 
So each and every one of those faces, each and every one of those persona being an artificial construct is like a prism. And like a glass prism, it will take the white light, the homogeneous light of the total consciousness that you are and passing that light through the prism of belief, emotion, and thought, it will break that light down into the diversified spectrum of the immediate specific physical reality you hold at any given moment to be true and real for you. So when you adjust the ideas, the beliefs, the emotions, and the thoughts within you, you create a different type of prism, and the white light then passes through that prism in a different way, and therefore projects a different type of reality upon the imaginary screen, 360 degrees all the way around you, that you think is exterior to yourself, but which is actually within. So it's fair to say if we are experiencing a reality that is less than pleasant for us, in no small part, we are responsible for that. Yes, but we do not mean to imply that that means blame. Responsibility, total responsibility for the creation of your reality means ultimate freedom in that way. And it takes acknowledging that you have created it, perhaps acknowledging that you may have unconscious or subconscious beliefs or fears within you that can attract these realities, negative though they may be, to you. And in recognizing that you have those beliefs, in acknowledging that you have those fears, then you own them. And simply remember, if you wish to change anything, you cannot transform something you do not own. So first you must own the idea that what you do experience in your life is your creation. That puts you squarely, as you say, in control, as you say, in the driver's seat. And then you can steer your vehicle through life along the path you desire, once you know you are firmly in control. But the easiest way to do that is to recognize that the reality you experience is your creation to begin with, even though it may be a subconscious creation. And that element of fear, it would seem that what you're saying would back up what is commonly held in, in psychology and I think religion and certainly philosophy, and that is fear is our biggest enemy. In a sense, it was truly stated in your world that the only thing that you do, in fact, have to fear is the fear itself, because there is nothing nothing, no thing inherent about any circumstance or situation that needs to create a negative result. Only the fear, the doubt, the belief in lack of self-empowerment generates the negative effect out of the circumstances that you then become fearful of and in becoming fearful of the effects you generated with your belief to begin with, you may then reinforce that fear through the experiences you create. But the experiences you have in life, they do not create the belief to begin with. The belief within you creates the experience, which may then reinforce the belief and then recreate the experience and catch you up in that cycle that you call your catch-22. So simply, it takes an understanding that if belief creates the experience, once you change the belief, you will change the experience. And we guarantee 100% that is the effect that will occur. You can do it for yourself and create the proof you need for yourself to see that it will occur. What would be something any one of the viewers could do at home right now watching the show to, to really get in touch with perhaps what their highest mission is, their purpose, their destiny? What will make them happy? I am convinced that everyone has an optimal, even though we may not experience it, we have an optimal path. In a sense, yes. Now, this is a very simple idea and a very simple answer. For recognize what excites you with integrity the most in life itself is the sign and the signal that lets you know what it is in life you can do most easily and can most effortlessly support you in the doing of that thing. What you call excitement, strong desire, that frequency, that energy, that vibration in and of itself is your physical translation, your bodily translation of the vibratory energy that represents the path in life you chose to be. So when you follow what excites you the most, you are most harmoniously, synchronistically aligned with all levels of your consciousness. All you need to do to see the effect of following what excites you the most is to trust it. Yes. And in that creating what we want, 
what is it that blocks us from achieving that? I mean, there's a whole room full of dreams here. And right. to but again, the idea. You have been taught it isn't that easy. You have been taught that if there's anything worth having in life, you must struggle, you must suffer in order to earn it in that way. As you have a saying upon your world, I believe it goes no pain, no gain. If you believe in that, then you will not allow yourself to experience gain without the pain. You simply have not been taught to believe that you are the effortless creations of the infinite creator. And since you are made in the image of the infinite creator, all of your creations can be effortless too, because you are just as much a multidimensional creator as the infinite creator is. What about, quote, the American dream? We've heard a lot about that, and I think my opinion now is a personal opinion that perhaps we've lost our focus. But if you think about what we've accomplished relative to other countries in the world and relative to other economies using certainly uh, material output as one measure, what is it that has happened that has diffused our focus? And is there, in fact, an American dream? Is there a collective dream as well as an individual yeah. dream? There is, and there are specific dreams within the collective dream, and all the individuals within any particular nation's dream are also truly valid dreams unto themselves, even though they may be, let us say, synchronized with a collective dream. But the diffusion that you may feel, that you may be experiencing, is simply, in a sense, a blending, a time of unlocking from past conceptions and a refocusing into new points of view, new attitudes, new directions, new approaches. In this way, this diffusing broadens your scope, broadens your horizon, broadens your perspectives, and gives you more opportunities to determine for yourselves that there may be more ways to get somewhere than you previously thought. You see, there is no one way to do anything. If there was only one way, there would only be one person. Look around. Your world is populated by billions of individuals, and each individual is a different way, a different idea, a different expression, a different path of the infinite creation and the overall collective dream, if you will. Now, each and every nation upon your world shares and holds an aspect of the collective dream, and different nations will represent certain ideas that other nations are not willing to play out or simply have not chosen to play out. That is why you now find your world growing and blending together, becoming, as you say, smaller and smaller every day, because now you are becoming one dream. Each and every individual in every nation and each and every nation are gathering together and bringing with them the pieces of the collective total dream so that you can all live the one dream of the total collective consciousness that all of you together on your world are. That is what will now begin to allow you to function as one world and that functioning will allow you to function with other whole worlds and allow you to join what you may loosely term our association of worlds. It would almost seem that uh, this particular technology that we're using right now, television, is a very good way to achieve that. There are many valuable tools of communication. Whatever works best for each and every one of you will be the tool you'll be attracted to and can be of best service in utilizing upon your planet. But there are many forms. They will become much more rapid, and you will begin to understand that you are linked mentally, emotionally, and that you can begin to exercise that level of communication as well as what you might typify to be your electronic media. How, how dependent is living one's dreams on, if you will, being in the moment? We always hear, be in the now, be hey. here, be now, don't be yesterday, don't be tomorrow. How important is it to be here right now? In a sense, it is critical to the operation of the mechanism. For if you are, let us say, living in the past, if you will, living in the future, if you will, not living in the present, then all the things you could be attracting to you will not be able to find you because the present is the only experiential time in which you actually exist. So if you are not focused in the present, then you will not be aware of all the opportunities that are in the present for you to act upon. You'll be looking elsewhere for everything else outside yourself, in the past, in the future. And all the time, right, as you say, under your nose are all the things you need right within you, right here, right now. When we look at the concept of time, some people say time is sequential and linear and then, of course, there's the argument, which I think is now becoming very popular, is that actually all time already exists. All events have already taken place. So rather than being in, in linear sequence, 
They've already all happened. It's just our perceptive understanding of them. Well, yes, happen. in a sense. Although your nomenclature that they have already happened is also a linear frame of reference because they are all happening all the time, right now, simultaneously, forever. But the idea is that both are true. Linear time is from within the perspective of the physicalized universe as you understand it to be, and that is the way you see it. It helps you focus upon the particular aspect of yourself that you are dealing with at any given moment, shall we say. Whereas on different levels where that time constraint is not so critical, then you have a broad overview that allows you to know that much of what you may have thought in physical reality took place one after the other in terms of events, are actually not sequential, but actually are all simultaneously existent. Let us use the analogy, if you will, of the communication form that you are dealing with today, perhaps what you might call your video or your film analogy. You know that each and every idea of the frame by frame by frame upon the film are all separate moments, separate instants, and you perceive them sequentially, one after another, right. in order to make sense or continuity out of the flow of motion. But you, in living in the frame, perhaps, are not aware of the frame about to come up, do not have a real strong perception of the frame that has already passed by. You are only immediately aware of the frame you are in. However, when you, as the, let us say, filmmaker, which is what you are, the creator of your reality, step back and look at all the frames laid out below you, well, you know that even though each and every experience in every frame is a discrete experience in sequential order, as a filmmaker, you know that the whole film exists all at once. All the frames are there right now. Another analogy is what you call your radio. You know all the programs are there all at once, all the frequencies are there all at once, but you only hear the one you are tuned to at any given moment. Sharp, we're going to have to pause for just a moment, but I want to thank you, and we're going to be, be right all back right. here. As you can see, living your dreams, we've, we've really had uh, quite an information expressed by Bashar, and I think it's going to take some analysis. But the most important thing, the most important thing, as I see it, is being here right now and following that excitement with integrity. So stay with us. We're going to be right back here at Inward Bound with Bashar and some audience participation. Welcome back to Inward Bound. I'm Sam Kephart, and if you're just tuning in, we're in mid-channeling, if you will, with Daryl Anka, who is channeling Bashar, who is an entity from the planet Essasani, and we're talking about Live Your Dreams, and I think, Bashar, now, with your permission, we'd like to uh, have some audience participation. So if I could have hands right here, okay. Yes, Bashar, you talk a lot about dreams and the uh, subconscious. Could you give us a better explanation of what the subconscious really is in, in human terms or how we can understand it better? Is it like a tape recorder where we're born with a blank recording or is it something that's been programmed before we've been sent here on the planet? To some degree, it is a product of the combined mentality you have created your civilization to be. It is, in a sense, a filter, if you will, because you come into this society not believing that you can be completely conscious about all that you need to be conscious about. So you create levels compartments, if you will, into which you can place the things you are not yet in your terms ready to deal with at any particular moment, one thing at a time, as you say. It is the product of living in linear time. It is the compartmentalization of the consciousness that you are so that you can, in your terms, sort things out in a more highly focused methodology. You can allow yourself to begin now to know in this transformational age that you are one consciousness, and as you begin to know you are one consciousness, the ideas that you experience, that you call the subconscious and the unconscious, will in a sense begin to dissolve and allow you to experience yourself in the now moment as one operational consciousness, simply knowing what you need to know when you need to know it. Anybody else? Gentleman behind. Yes, Bashar. Um, I was curious, uh, keeping in mind that that our uh, physical self is basically a personification of our spiritual self, um, are we able actually to physically, as we know it, 
change or restructure ourselves physically based on, on, a, on a spiritual restructuring? And is the change actually physically noticeable as we know it? It can be. Again, as you have said, the body is simply the spirit in physical terms. The physical world is simply the shadow of the soul. When you wish to change the shape of your body's shadow, you do not pull and tug at the shadow, you change the shape of your body and the shadow follows suit. When you wish to change the shape of your body or any idea or aspect in the physical world, you change the shape of your soul, which is the idea that you are at any given moment. The physical reality has absolutely no choice but to follow suit, and it can be noticeable to the other individuals in that physical reality if your communicative telepathic skills in that sense are strong enough. We can develop that type of concentration, and, and if we are able to develop that, that type of concentration, is it possible that for, for example, people who would have, for example, di a, a, a disorder such as diabetes or Down syndrome would actually be able to restructure themselves to yes. live what we would consider to be a You are now habit. beginning to explore in your civilization many of the understandings that you are made of energy. You are a thero, an electromagnetic energy, in a particular crystalline pattern. You can learn to re-identify, restructure that pattern. And in so restructuring that pattern, your body will recrystallize in whatever format is indicative of that pattern. And as a new blueprint, a new definition, if it does not contain the definition of dis-ease, then it will not be able to express the idea of dis-ease. Yes, it is very possible because everything is a matter of vibrational frequency. As you believe, so you shall experience. Now, there may be individuals who cannot bring themselves to believe that that is possible, and so they may wish to work through some of the belief systems within your society that your society already considers valid. But even though you may avail yourself of what may be, in your terms, a mundane belief system, a mundane cure in that way, it is you that have still, in a sense, cured yourself by simply extending a belief into a particular type of method that you think will work. But sure, I think I have a follow-on question to that. So, it would be fair to say that the multi-billion dollar healing industry that we have, for instance, in this country, is essentially based on the doctor doing certain things which lead the patient to believe they're cured, yes. regardless of what the, the, the technology or the methodology is. Yes, because there are individuals, in your terminology, who may exhibit the simplest of symptoms, that no medical practitioner will be able to cure. And there are individuals who in your medical practitioner's eyes have absolutely no chance of living, who in your terminology will become cured through methodologies that your doctors do not believe in. It is all up to the belief system of the individual and what they attract themselves to that determines how they transform themselves into whatever new idea they desire to be. Is it fair to say that using light spectrum as one method of healing, it's something we really haven't done much with. You are beginning to, and you have actually done it as a society many times, many times before, though you have forgotten. It is something you are now recognizing because your tools, now that you are changing, are becoming simpler, more transformational in concept, less moving parts, less diversified materials are necessary. You are now working with the energies of creation itself, light. Everything is made of light. In our ancient language, Esasani, how we refer to our own homeworld, literally translates into your language as place of living light. All beings are literally living light. Okay. Any other questions? We have a question over here. Thanks. Wait for the um, a lot of wonderful accelerations happened to me since coming to the channeling for about the last nine months with you. A um, lot of acceleration. But I'm still plagued with, when in the middle of something exciting, a left-sided sore throat erupts. And I've been recently using crystal, rose quartz, kunzite to place there. But I notice that it's always more severe in the springtime, Easter time. I always remember as a kid coming down with these sore throats around Easter vacation. I'm just wondering if you can uh, shed some light. Some of it is your susceptibility to the environment that you believe you exist within. Some of it you will also work out in the process you are going through now that it will involve you in the idea of the acceleration of your energy, the acceleration of your momentum, and the lack of waiting. That will clear some of the systems in your body so they will not be as sensitized to those changes taking place in your planetary atmosphere at this time. I have a question. Okay. So is there, I'm sorry, is there anything more I can do with the crystals while I'm... For now, trust your own instincts and imagination and follow whatever belief systems you think are strongest within you. We will speak more with you later. Thank you. Over here, the gentleman in the gray 
Sweater? Uh, you refer to, you make references to terminology that's indigenous to our culture, our society. And I wonder if you get this through, uh, you get this empathically uh, through whom you're channeling In yourself. a sense, we use the channel as a repository of your vocabulary. We are not speaking your language, but only activating from the channel those words that are necessary to make the best sense in your terms out of the concepts we are sending. And does that equate to or with uh, what we might call the universal storehouse of uh, knowledge or information? That is accessible to everyone, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Lady, Penny in the back. So in other words, everything you are physically and mentally is a matter of visual visualization. In a sense, that is one approach. We are as we imagine and believe ourselves to be. You are as you imagine and believe yourselves to be. As you see yourself, your self-image in that way, that is the effect and the result and the experience that you generate. So yes, visualization, one of the strongest senses you have within your inner eye, your inner sight, your inner mind, is highly responsible for the effects you experience physically that structure themselves in your material world, yes. And mentally also. I mean, as far as your health and everything else. It is all, literally, a matter of belief and attitude. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, here in front. Um, Erica. I wondered if you would talk a little bit on a national scale about our conflict with Russia and our fear and misunderstanding of them and about nuclear possibilities. The idea, simply put once again, is that as the representative polarity powers upon your world, or what you call power upon your world, you are for each other the thing that each other fears the most within itself. You are the polarized reflections of those things that each side fears to contain. This is why the blending together from your hearts, from your desires, from your mind, will allow you to become the one society that will contain all of what you might call the best aspects of all the nations, all the cultures within your world. Recognize that it is only the fear about facing the things within yourself that allows you to project that fear upon each other and then generate circumstances and scenarios that lead you to think you are going to wipe each other out. Now, this may be true on certain levels, but the idea now that we can and are allowed to share with your world is that your world will not destroy itself by nuclear annihilation. You, as a society, even if it is a collective unconscious recognition, have already decided that you are not going to destroy yourselves by nuclear annihilation. You may still be posturing. You may still meet many accelerations of violence upon the surface of your world, but in a sense, you are now bringing all these things and getting them out of your system up to the surface, letting them be open, open so that each and every one of you at this time can decide, is this how we want our world to be? Or do we prefer it to be another way? Recognize also at this time and we can tell you this now only because you have already as a society decided that you will not destroy yourselves through nuclear means. It is your world. You may do with it as you wish. We cannot interfere. That would be contrary to our belief systems. However, you are therefore allowed to do what you will with your world. You may even utterly destroy it if you wish, but not through a methodology that will affect more than your own world. Nuclear annihilation would tear through the dimensional fabrics of space and time and affect many of the alternate parallel universes to which you are attached. And therefore, as your government is actually already well aware of, your world would never have been allowed to wage nuclear war. And your government has been given many demonstrations over the course of various years that the different societies in the association of worlds of which we are a part would in this way simply create an ineffective operation of your war machinery should it have come down to the point where you decided to activate that idea. These demonstrations have been given and your governments are very well aware of our existence and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that nuclear war is not now in your future. We can tell you this now because you have already yourselves decided not to wage that war. It would not be in anyone's interest at this point. Thank you. Thank you. We have a question here on the end. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bashar, you've spoken of parallel dimensions. Right. And it appears that uh, you've, you've talked about also being in a different dimension. And I'm wondering if that's a dimension that you could be in the same space with us and be in a different dimension and we would not be aware of your presence. In a sense, that is true for every parallel reality. No matter how far away it is in time or space, all of the idea of time and space being the type of illusion that it is, 
means that every idea, every civilization, every time, every place exists, quote unquote, as you say, here and now, simply on different frequencies. Once again, your radio analogy works best. All the programs overlap. All the frequencies, all the signals are there. You get the one your dial is tuned to. All the others tuned to other dials will not experience your program. You will not experience theirs until the dial is shifted to accommodate the translation. So in your society, you're able to tune to different programs or stations. Yes, and as you, you are learning to do as well. You see, the modality of our space travel is not really travel in that sense. It is re-identification of ourselves within the universal holographic matrix. When we re-identify the idea of our time-space coordinate vibrational signature, then by definition our spaceships must appear at the new coordinate that has been programmed into the identity of the vibrational field of the ship. We do not travel in a sense, we relocate, redefine, re-identify ourselves within the universal matrix. You follow me? Yes. And I'm wondering about the direction that we're going to go through. Uh, uh, to be able to travel efficiently at greater distances uh, or relocate yeah. our positions, um, our technology has to be upgraded. We have to have the clarity of uh, the light crystallization come to know this, I presume. Uh, Much of this technology does already exist upon your world. But because of what you have created and structured your society to be, much of it has been suppressed. How soon do you see... Us Within what you call the next three decades of your time, as we perceive your energy, an entire foundation for your society will have been laid to allow each and every one of you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you create your own reality, that there are other civilizations desirous of interaction with you, and you will begin to formulate the ideas of what you call harmonious existence upon your entire planetary sphere. So will we uh, have an, uh, a revolution in travel then, uh, the vehicles that we use? Yes. And are we also able to travel just spiritually? Oh, yes. Understand, this is all, quote-unquote, spiritual travel anywhere. The idea of spaceship or your own automobiles or trains or planes are all simply extensions of the level of awareness your consciousness has created for itself to exist within. We utilize the idea of spacecraft still because it allows us to facilitate interaction with many societies such as yours more easily with things you can identify with more strongly. Although our society is going through its own transformation and we are moving from the idea of physicality into non-physicality even as you are going from the type of physicality you exist within now to a more rarefied and more accelerated type of physicality yourselves. Bashar, I, I have a follow-on question if I may I, to um, the point that was made earlier about not destroying the planet. When we're talking about living your dreams, I'm sure every single individual, regardless of the political system that they're in, really deep down inside feels that they want peace, they want harmony, they want some sense of grounded belongingness. Nice. And I'm wondering what we can do as individuals to jointly and individually create that dream of, of peace and harmony. Not in some airy-fairy sense, because you know, the people say, ah, oh, it's a bunch of baloney, we have to have our weapons, we have to have this, we have to have that, and yet on the other hand, I think if we were to place the same assets, shall we say, the same resources that are going into uh, weapons research and things of this nature, into upgrading our ability to get along with each other and sharing positive technologies, it would, it would work better. What can we do? If you Recognize, were advising us, what can we do? First of all, you can begin to teach the following idea to every being upon your world. Each and every individual truly is as powerful as he or she needs to be to create whatever reality they desire without having to hurt anyone else or themselves in order to create it. By beginning to understand that if anyone believes they have to force a point of view on someone else, they obviously do not believe in the power of that point of view themselves. The idea of forcing your point of view on someone else is an expression of powerlessness not an expression of self-containment power, not an expression of being a facet of the universal energy. Belief that you are already an aspect of universal energy means you know you are in control. Forcing an idea upon someone else means you believe you are out of control. And then you have a tendency to believe you are going, as you say, down the tubes and wish to take as many individuals with you as you can because you do not want to be alone, which the belief in lack of power allows you to feel as if you are alone. 
You are not alone. None of you are alone. You are upon your own world. Together, as a family, literally, you are connected to every other world, every other dimensional plane within creation. Now, in your terminology, pragmatically speaking, if you will but allow yourselves to know that you can do the things in your life that attract you, that you desire, that excite you the most with integrity, knowing you do not have to hurt anyone else or yourself in order to create that reality, you will, I guarantee it, 100% see the differences occurring. You will know. You do not have to fear anyone else because the vibration you are will be the reality you experience. Remember this, it is simple physics, simple mechanics. No circumstance and no situation has built-in meaning. They are neutral, blank, empty scenarios in that way. They are a set of relationship props. You give them meaning by having been taught to believe that they mean this or that or something else. So any neutral situation that you give a positive meaning to, you will get a positive effect out of. Any neutral circumstance you give a negative meaning to, you will get a negative effect out of. It is simple physics, simple mechanics, and it does work, I guarantee it. As soon as you know beyond a shadow of a doubt with ultimate trust and simplicity that if you are willing to know what you prefer in life, willing to believe that your ability to desire it is your ability to manifest it, then you will act accordingly, physically, you will act upon the opportunities that present themselves to you in positive directions, and you will see and reap positive benefits. Always, there are no exceptions. Thank you, Bashar. I think we have time maybe for one more question. Gentleman in the back, Kurt, one second. Let's get back there. Just this. Uh, in a spiritual sense, there seems to be no contradiction between the 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 idea of predestination and free will we do have free will oh yes in in a spiritual sense but in a physical sense there are two types of free will the free will of the physical you the physical consciousness you know yourself to be the free will of what you might call the higher consciousness the total being now the free will of the higher consciousness usually will express itself in your terminology as what you perceive as predestination or fate but it only expresses its free will in that sense in the most generalized of terms. All of the specifics of how you experience the free will of the higher consciousness is up to the free will of the physical being you are in this world at this time. Another analogy. In other words, let us say before you chose this physical life, as you were more blended with your higher self, you determined that through and down a specific hallway in this life, you would walk. That is your general theme, your general destiny. How you walk down that hallway is up to the free will of your physical being. You can walk, you can run, you can go in the light, you can go in the dark, you can go alone, you can go with friends. You can swim. Your general theme, your general destiny. How you walk down that hallway is up to the free will of your physical being. You can walk, you can run, you can go in the light, you can go in the dark, you can go alone, you can go with friends. You can swim, you can fly, you can go backwards, you can go upside down. You can look at all the doorways down the way. You can go right to the end. It is up to you how you walk down that hallway, but walk down that hallway, you will. Because that is the basic experience that the total soul, the free will of the total being you are, desires to have. You follow me? Yes, but we'll still be subject to certain physical laws uh, if, for example, it is it predestined that California, uh, where we are now, uh, will someday experience a, a, a disastrous earthquake. It or is not predestined. It's there not. may be gradual change, but recognize this about what you call prediction. The idea is that there is no such thing as a prediction of the future. For all probable futures are just as real. When you hear a prediction, as you call it, recognize that it is simply this. It is a sensing made at the time the sensing is made of the energy that exists at the time the sensing is made. That is the most likely energy to manifest if it doesn't change. Therefore, you are being told by the sensitive individual, this is the blueprint, this is where the energy is, this is where the momentum is. If you don't like it, change it. When you are made aware of the prediction, if you realize that you are simply being told, look, this is the direction you're moving in, if you don't like it, now that you are aware of it, render the prediction obsolete. You are always in control. You can 
function as a safety valve, if you wish, and you can channel that energy through you so that it does not have to build up to the point where you have to shake yourselves awake. If you are willing to wake up now, you can aid and assist in the transformation and allow it to change your world in beneficial rather than disastrous ways. You can destructurize your society to reform a new society without having to cause destruction in the negative sense. So that is not predestined. There may be a great deal of momentum behind it, but much of that momentum since the first time it was predicted has changed. And you will find that many of the catastrophes that have been predicted for your entire world are now far more remote far more isolated, not as generally widespread. You have already woken up to a great degree and done much to transform this energy in positive way. You I are see. always in control. What you may recognize as the basic laws of the universe, you may agree to believe in en masse to a certain extent. None of those laws in any way, shape or form mean that you must suffer. If a certain area is going to experience the idea of a catastrophe in that way, if you are simply not of the vibration of that idea, if you do not need that idea, whether you plan to consciously or not, you will simply not be in that area when it occurs. Bashar, I want to, want to thank you for just a moment here. We're going to have to pause a little bit speechless, as I'm sure many of you are, but the important thing to remember here is that we are having access right now to a reflection of Thanks. someone who, right, from, from, from an outside environment, but simply reflecting back to us what we already know. Yeah. I think, think deep inside, we know that this is what it's all about, and we'll be responsible for the reality to create. So stay with us. We're going to be right back here at Inward Bound with Live Your Dreams. cause of death, but it can be prevented if you watch for these important signals. Sudden temporary weakness or loss of feeling in your face or body. Temporary loss of vision in one or both eyes. Difficulty with speaking or loss of power in your legs that causes you to fall. Today, with your help, stroke can be a preventable disease. This is a message from the Will Rogers Institute, White Plains, New York. Welcome back to Inward Bound. I'm Sam Kephart, and we've been visiting with Bashar, channeling through Daryl Anka. And Bashar, just very briefly, I would like to thank you very much for sharing your ideas, your philosophies, and giving us a good mirror upon ourselves. We thank you for functioning as ambassadors of your world and allowing us to function as ambassadors of our respective worlds. We extend our unconditional love to you all. When we talk about Inward Bound, the whole theme of the show is about going within. And I think when we listen and absorb what Bashar has said, that whole key thing that we are prisms of light, all is vibration and belief, emotion and thought. Those are the cornerstones of the prism, this physical reality that we create, our persona. And if we want to really change what our outer expression is, what we're feeling and experiencing and seeing reflected back to us in our creation, then we have to be willing to change and hold a different belief of how we conceive of ourselves and our relationships to others. And in doing that, and in getting that harmony for ourselves, we'll bring harmony and peace to the planet, and we'll all have an awful lot more fun. Thank you, and please be with us again. Thank you, Bashar. Great.